Welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning about the different selection tools we have available in GIMP for selecting certain areas of our image and creating a custom selection that we can then apply changes to. So this is common if we want to only apply changes in here like erase, for example. It'll only erase to whatever we have selected. Any of our brushes will only be drawn in this selection. This is also pretty common for doing something like a color effect where you'll select just a certain area and we can go to like hue and saturation and change the hue of whatever selected in that area. Um, also, what you'll do a lot is you'll do a rectangular selection like this and then you can go to image crop to selection and sort of cut out or you could get a really tight shot in here of just these strawberries and we can go to crop a selection and then you'll just have this image we could then export or do something to. So let me do control Z and undo all of this. And let's start from the very beginning, learning how to use these selection tools. The first tool we're going to look at is the rectangular select tool. R is the shortcut key to get into that tool. And that just lets us draw a rectangle or a square to draw it. We just left, we hold down the left mouse button and then unhold it to create the selection. Once it's created, we can change it by hovering to the top and changing how tall it is either at the top or the bottom. And I'm just left clicking and holding to change that. Again, that only appears when you get close towards the edge, sort of those handles will appear for doing that. You can go to the corner and change the corners as well. And so the bottom left hand corner is now fixed and the other two are changed. Here, if I click on the left one, the bottom right hand corner is fixed and everything else is changed. So you can use these methods to sort of select the part of the image you want with a rectangular selection. If we want to move the entire selection around, we can use the move tool. So we click on the move tool by default. I believe it's set to uh, moving the layer, uh, yeah, the entire layer. So it's going to kind of move our image and we see this transparency in the background. I'm going to hit control Z to get it back because what I want to do to move the selection, we see under the settings for move, it, ha it has an option for moving just the selection. So I'll left click on that. And now when I move this around, it'll move my selection and not my image. So I can move this down to the part of the image I want, and maybe I'll just go to image crop to selection to get that nice selected area. So now we can either work on our image, just having the whole thing selected. If you notice, the whole part is still selected right now. We can see these little black and white lines moving around the outside, and that shows us everything is selected, which means any tools that we use right now are going to apply to the entire image. But if we only wanted to select a certain area like the strawberry, we might use this next tool, which is the ellipse select tool. It's going to let us draw an ellipse or a circle similar to the rectangular tool. We just left click and hold and whatever selection we draw, it draws a new selection every time. So if we want to apply some smudges to just this part of the strawberry, we select this. We can come over and resize the circle similar to we did like how we did with the rectangle. And then we can come and grab the smudge tool. And now only smudging is going to happen within our selected area and nothing outside will be affected. I'm going to hit control Z to undo those changes. If we want to select multiple strawberries or multiple parts of our image, we can grab this tool. Any of these tools have these options and under mode, just like we changed with the move mode, there's also this ellipse select mode. Right now it says replace the current selection, but we could also go add to current selection. When we're in this mode, anything we draw, will get added to it and create sort of this different shape. I can create like a snowman shape here, but then we have this part selected over here as well. So I could select every strawberry individually like this. And then we have a nice sort of selection of just our strawberries. There's also part of the mode that lets us subtract from the current selection. So if I didn't want, if I wanted to change this, I just kind of draw and subtract this out. This isn't necessarily the best way to do this, but it is a method of doing it. And if you're selecting a kind of a circular object, it can be kind of nice like this bucket here. We can select this and sort of cut out part everything that's not within this selection. So that's just a method for doing the selection. We hit enter and we can have that be our total selection. And then anything that we apply within here uh, is going to be only applied to that selected area. The next tool we'll look at is the freehand selection tool. This lets us left click with our mouse to create these points and we can create any type of custom shape we want. When we get to the end, we'll just click on the very last point and then we can come in here and adjust by left clicking and holding and adjust these to get just the shape that we want. 
When we think we have it right, we'll hit enter, and that becomes our selected area. We can then use any tool that we want to to apply changes only within the selected area, and nothing outside will be affected. I want to also bring your attention to the different options on these tools. We have this feathered edge, and what the feathering helps you do is if you're ever doing something, maybe we draw a circle here just to show this. If we grab a brush, and right now we just fill the whole thing in with black, we see it has a very hard edge. But if we turn on feathering, so I'll grab the ellipse tool again, and we'll check this feather edges. What feather edges does is create a softer edge around the selected area. So now if we grab the brush tool and fill this in, we see the edges are much softer. We don't have a hard edge like we did on this one. So if I go to select, I can right click and go to select all. So now we see without the selection on these, we have a soft edge here, a feathered edge on this selection, and no feather on this one. So the feather can kind of help you merge in and make it look more natural without a hard edge on it. And again, that's feathering. And it's a good idea to go through and play with the different options. Anti-aliasing also helps smooth the edges out around your selected area. When you have something selected as well, we can change the position of a selection here by just manually, if we know where we want it to be on the pixels, we can change the size of it this way as well. And so there's some really good options we can play with under the properties of each different selection method. Let me control Z and get back. Another selection method I wanna show is this similar to the freehand selection. We're gonna skip a few. This is the scissor selection. And it does similar to freehand, only it's more intelligent. So we just left click and we can come over here and left click again. And it's gonna try and estimate where we want, what part of the object we wanna follow. It didn't do a great job in this case, but it'll kind of try to follow some of the lines around. And then we can always come in here and re-click and add one in to get it exactly where we want. And again, we hit the enter key, and now we have this part of the image selected. We could do something like control C on the keyboard to copy this. And then we can get a, if we were in a new document, we can go control V and paste just that part of the image. But we see it is kind of jagged because we didn't have a feather applied. So we might want to apply a feather to that instead. I'm going to close out of this. Or we could make a change to it. We can just do some adjusting in here. If we did try to crop, uh, if we went to image crop to selection, just be aware it's going to always crop a square. It's not going to cut it out. To cut it out, we'd want, need to cut, uh, use something under edit. So we can right click and go to edit. And we can do cut. We can actually cut this and remove it and have a blank space in there. Uh, we can right click and go to edit. We can go fill with, so we can fill with the foreground color, similar to using the bucket tool. So there's lots of different options and we'll play with more of that in the future. Um, these other ones, if I'm gonna go to select and go to all. These other ones here we have, and your icons may look different. We have the fuzzy select and the select by color. They're gonna kind of behave similar in this one. Select by color does what you might expect, where if you select a certain color, it selects everything within that color. And so we can turn this threshold down over here to the left, and then it will select much finer. It really helps you have if you have a good solid color you're trying to select. Otherwise, it's gonna try to grab more, like it's getting this sort of greens and tans in the bucket and in the leaves. Um, the fuzzy select is gonna help us get away from that problem turn down the threshold a little bit. It's hard to tell with this example, but it really is only, if we get our threshold right, we can then select just a certain area and just make changes to just those leaves or just these parts of the strawberries. But again, it's not perfect like we had there. Certain pixels are going to select different shaded areas, especially gradients and shading. Um, so it may or may not work depending on the image you're using. Anyway, that's some of the different selection methods you can play with. We'll touch more on these ones. They're a little bit more advanced, so we'll touch more on using the threshold and playing with some of these in the future. There's also ways we can combine different ones, but just be aware of the selection mode is really important. And if you do get on the mode, one common mistake is that if you go to cut something out and you cut the whole thing out, and then you forget you were in that mode, and you go to draw a selection, it won't let you. It just gives you this symbol. You can always look for cues down at the bottom if something's not working. It tells us cannot subtract from an empty selection. It's because we're on the subtraction mode right now. One thing I like to do is just stay in this mode here, 
the replace current selection mode, and then use the shortcut keys. We can hover over and learn those shift and control. So if, if in this mode we draw and we draw again, it replaces our selection. Holding shift, we can add to that without having to go and change the mode. So we can add to our selection and holding control, we can subtract to that. And that works with all these different ones. We can do freehand, hold shift and add in a new part and hit enter. So we can add in different parts if we want to, if we can freehand draw in these, and then we can freehand draw out some of the selection as well. So it can be really handy. So learn those shortcut keys, shift and control is gonna avoid some confusion in this mode. We'll go ahead and play with some of these different selection methods. It may not be clear right now how powerful this is, but as we start using more of the color tools and some of the different filters, it's going to be really powerful. And under, having a good foundation, understanding how selection works is gonna help you avoid a lot of confusion and frustration in the future. So go ahead and leave your questions in the comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.